been like ages since uh, I was out here with you, but I'm happy to be back. And today we have a very special episode um, because I have with me a guest. Guess who it is? It's no other person but my daughter. Hope introduce yourself, please. Hello, everybody. I am Hope and Tam. Nice meeting all you all. Yeah, a pleasure having you on the Psychologist NG TV. And it promises to be a wonderful time with us today. If you haven't subscribed to the Psychologist NG TV yet, what are you waiting for? I mean, it's your only opportunity to make me smile. If you want to see me smile, please subscribe to the Psychologist NG TV. Just click on the subscribe button and also click on the bell sign to enable notification so you can get you can, you can get notified on all our future videos i'm excited you know whenever i'm excited i this is how i speak so today um hope has gotten a couple of questions from her friends or maybe her classmates occasionally while she's in school she usually comes up with questions like mommy this person said this and that what should they do and i give answers and she said to me mommy why don't you just do a video answering all of these questions now that we're on the break let my friends send down their questions and you provide answers and i said okay i'll try to do that but as I looked at the questions that her friends had asked, one thing struck me. Um, I think parents have got to realize that we have a huge job on our hands. I mean, this is the 21st century and we are dealing with a group of, a group of people who have called themselves millennials, Generation S, X, right? Uh, whatever it is they've called themselves, it's a different world from our world. And parenting in the 21st century has got to be Deliberate. Parents have to deliberately inculcate their values, their religious beliefs, uh, character into their children. I mean, it's almost getting to a hopeless situation out there. I mean, I will need more than just psychology to answer the questions today. But God help me. So parents, please, let's be deliberate about parenting. It's our responsibility. We cannot pass it over to anyone. And the most valuable gift we can give to our children is our time. Let's invest time. Let's see our children make mistakes and correct them. Let's be available to model the correct behavior to our children, to love them and make them feel accepted. As a matter of fact, the best way to deal with uh, adolescents and the stress and storm that comes with it is building a good relationship with your children whilst they're still toddlers throughout their lives up to adolescence. Make sure you're their friend. Share your life with them and share their lives. Know what is happening in their life. Talk to them as adults. The mistake we make is that when they're still little, we think they're too little to understand. But I got to understand with my last baby that from when, before they begin to say even the first word, they can understand you and they are constantly trying to communicate with you. So let's listen to our children. Let's try to understand their language and let's make them our friends. Like the saying goes, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. So when your children know you care about them, they're ready to listen to you when you correct them you're ready to take corrections because they know why you're doing this that's just a word for the parents and for the um teenagers uh, my word for you today will be that uh, maybe a reminder or maybe new information for some of you whilst you're still in your teenage uh, the prefrontal cortex the part of the brain that's responsible for planning for critical thinking and making decisions is still developing that's probably why we tend to make hasty decisions that's why we don't think through um before making choices on very serious life issues please and please do yourself a favor be conscious about this fact and whenever you want to make a choice or a decision make it deliberately you owe yourself a duty to turn out to turn out right you can effort to play the blame game it's your life after all your parents will live out their lives and live away and you will have yourself to contend with for the rest of your life so make the best of your life no excuses make sure you're reasonable critical at every point in time make sure you make the right choices because we are free to the point of choice and after we make the choice we are controlled by our choices so much said now hope can we hear the questions your friends have uh, asked oh yes okay the first question, my parents kicked me out when I was 16 and pregnant. My baby died to la due to lack of proper care. Should I forgive my parents? Interesting question indeed. My parents kicked me out when I was 16 and pregnant. 
and due to improper care, my baby died. Should I forgive my parents? Uh, like I said today, I'll be needing much more than psychology. First of all, forgiveness is a command from God. And uh, I'm imagining that you believe in God and you understand that you aren't a perfect being. We are all fallible. We've all made mistakes, sinned against humans and sinned against God. So obeying the command of God, you have to forgive. For you to be forgiven, I mean, according to the precepts of the Bible in which I believe, and most other religions, having sex out of marriage, extramarital sex, is fornication and is a sin. And if you expect God to forgive you, um, you should forgive your parents. Uh, before I go further, I actually sympathize with you. I understand or imagine that you are you must have gone through a lot. That's young as you were, you know, and having to face um, such a brave challenge without the support of family, uh, I imagine it must have been tough for you. However, you have to forgive your parents because it's a command from God. Away from that, uh, forgiveness is actually something you do for yourself. Because as long as you're carrying the burden in your heart, you're carrying a weight that could weigh you down actually. Because as much as you're carrying that negative uh, emotion of anger uh, inside of you, resentment inside of you, there will be negative hormones that will be released by your body that could cause you bodily harm, could make you sick. So you owe yourself the responsibility to let go of that burden, to forgive your parents like I try to teach little children. Look at it like this, for everyone that hurts you, you're taking uh, one tomato fruit into a bag and taking it along with you. And so for everyone that hurts you, you pick a fresh tomato out of the bag, and the ones you already have uh, are, are, are getting spoiled and getting uh, smelly, and you're carrying them all along. It's a whole lot of baggage. So just put down the baggage, forgive for yourself. You're the one bearing the burden. Most like people who have hurt us are not even aware that they've hurt us. They have forgotten that they've hurt us. And here we go carrying baggages and allowing them to reside in our minds rent free. So you owe yourself the responsibility of forgiving your parents, forgive them for yourself. And anyone who uh, you're angry towards actually has power over you. From where, wherever they are, they're controlling your behavior. Don't give anyone such control over your behavior. So for God's sake, for your health, and because you don't want to keep looking backwards. This happened in the past. Put it behind you and move forward. As long as you keep focused on this event that has already passed, you won't make much progress in your life. So in order for you to progress in life, forget about it, forgive them, and move on. However, don't make such mistake again. Don't let it happen again. You can forgive people, but don't let them hurt you a second time. Uh, take that in context. So I wish you luck with your life, and sorry about that uh, awful experience. Okay, next question. I love my boyfriend, but he wants sex, and I'm not ready yet. What should I do? Uh, that's another tough one uh, coming out there, especially in this generation where we've tried to give um, uh, these things some form of names and uh, modernize them and think it's okay. Well, I want to speak based on my own value system. For me, um, sex before marriage is absolutely unacceptable uh, because like my Bible tells me, uh, my body is a temple of God. And like the Bible says, when you uh, commit the sin of fornication, you sin again, not just against God, but also against your body. Your body is your pride. You know, your body is not to throw around. And I think if you're committing, um, giving your body in sex to someone who has not made any serious commitments, I think uh, it's not a good thing to do. It's not the right thing to do. First of all, you're sinning against God. You're jeopardizing your, your soul because call it whatever name, sin is sin. And um, we think because we are millennials and all of that, that... Uh, we are, we are the ones bringing on these things. Everything we see happening today has happened in the past. If, if you're a good student of history, go and read about Sodom and Gomorrah. And the same way God dealt with people who did these things in the past is the same way he would deal with us. So sin is sin. And your body is too precious, you know, for you to throw around casually. And not everything and everyone should come into you. First of all, it's a test. If your value system does not allow you to engage in sex before marriage, and this gentleman loves you, he should be able to wait for you. Even if it, he, he doesn't share your value system, he should love you enough to respect your position, to respect your values. If he insists on having sex before marriage when you don't want to, that's a sign that he doesn't love you enough. 
That's, I mean, I understand all the self-control issues. Let's not even go there. But if he loves you, he will stand by you. I don't know if I have time today to share experiences, but uh, we have similar experiences. Men have not changed in um, their constitution, you know, and there was Joseph and there were others. And I had a friend, quite close friend when I was about 16, and we were friendly and uh, maybe attracted. I wouldn't say I was attracted to him, but he was. And um, he knew my position that said no sex until I get married, and he had to respect that. So any young man that loves you should respect what you believe in. Nobody should put you under pressure to do what you don't want to do. Besides that, the chance is very high that after sex, he will leave. Because the young men, are, they're still growing. They're still getting to understand themselves. And a lot of things that happen in the minds of uh, young teenage girls and boys is based on the hormonal rush in their systems. They're still trying to comprehend their lives and get used to these things. And for the men folk especially, uh, most times it's a game. It's about pleasing their friends. It's about proving a point to their friends that they are male enough, man enough, and all of that. It may not really have much to do with you, although they will sweet mouth and sweet talk into believing it's about you. So you got to tread with care and hold your values dear. And remember, your body, it's too valuable to throw around. Remember your dignity. Please keep it. Keep it for the person who is ready to wait and who is ready to commit himself enough to go all the way with you. It's a sign that he's worth that precious gift. I hope I've been able to answer that question. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Well, the next question goes like this. My dad left my mom when my brother and I were very young. And my mom was only one taking care of us throughout this period. Recently, my paternal uncle called and said my dad wants to come back. Should we accept him? He says the dad left when they were young and the mother raised them and now a paternal uncle called and said the father wants to come back. And uh, I had to probe further and I discovered that this young man is about uh, uh, 20 years or above or something like that. And I'm thinking that uh, that's not your call to pick, it's your mother's. Uh, if your mother wants he, her husband back in the house, I imagine there's not so much you can do. You are already, by next year you're going to be an adult, uh, maybe from 18, depending on the... Um, which side of the coin we are looking at. So focus on building your life and building your future. It's the same thing, forgiveness. Forgive him for yourself and move on. If he wants to come back, oh, let him come if your mother wants him back. He, you know, it's, I think the decision is your mother's to make. For you, uh, you, you just owe yourself to forgive him, maintain a cordial relationship as possible, as much as possible when he comes around and move on with your life. Focus on building your life. Forget about the past and all the things that should have been and focus on the future and who knows you might end up you know getting along with your father and give him an opportunity to right his wrongs we all make mistakes and we're all looking for opportunities to correct our mistakes so maybe if you give him a chance who knows okay thank you very much yes sir. um i'm secretly addicted to drugs i want to stop but i can't and i cannot get drugs during this lockdown what should i do yeah this is another one um Drug addiction, uh, I think we have to treat that uh, in details on its own. But I imagine you're talking about psychoactive drugs, drugs that alter our, our states of consciousness, our mental state, our emotional state, and even our behavior. And they also change, uh, alter the workings of the nervous system. Now, by the time you, you develop an addiction to a drug, uh, that is to say you've developed tolerance so as the day goes by you need to take more and more amount of that drug to get the feeling that you know you are seeking okay and then you also develop dependence on the drug that is to say you cannot do without this drug and you go all out seeking this drug and even engaging in um, uh, illegal behaviors uh, uh, just to get the drug and no matter how the, what harm the drug is doing to you destroying relationships destroying your work and interfering with your life, you will take the drug anyway. And uh, fourthly, if you are addicted to the drug, when you stop taking the drug, you will have some withdrawal symptoms. This is because the influx of this drug into your system alters your nervous system. And by the time you, take, you stop taking this drug suddenly, you know, there's gonna be a, uh, a, a, I mean an overturn of your nervous system, so to say, and the results can be fatal. Withdrawal symptoms for those who are addicted to alcohol can be fatal, and you know, but uh, for some other drugs, not so. Uh, so 
in the lockdown, I don't know how far you've gone, I don't know, but if you're experiencing any of these withdrawal symptoms, ranging from headaches to fevers to high blood pressure to tremors, it can even, unconsciousness is one of the symptoms, please see a doctor because most of these withdrawal symptoms, you need a doctor to manage you so that it doesn't get fatal, okay? So if you're experiencing withdrawal symptoms, see a doctor. Uh, if you are not addicted to the point where you're having any withdrawal symptoms and you can't get a drug, I think it's a good time to try to stop. So look inwards. What, what's the reason for you engaging or indulging in taking these drugs? What are you trying? Sometimes you're trying to cover up something. Sometimes you're trying to deal with stress. We're trying to deal with depression. What it is, deal, whatever it is, deal with the source of the problem, you know, and then cut off those relationships that take you towards taking drugs. The friends who supply these drugs, the friends you hang out with that take drugs, you have to cut off from them. And then also um, engage in activities, you know, that will keep you busy. An idle mind is the devil's workshop. So if your mind is working, you know, round the clock, you're busy, uh, take up uh, a skill, learn a skill, learn to play a musical instrument, uh, do something that would distract you from taking drugs. And I think all of this will help cut off from the source of the drug. Uh, but if um, you are, you know, we're talking about you're not really having withdrawal symptoms, but if you're trying to get off drugs at this time, my advice would be that you don't go off drugs suddenly. I mean, it's our um, prayer that you get off drugs, but if you're going to do it, don't do it suddenly, especially when you don't have medical assistance. You know, so you can get off these drugs gradually, reduce your, the quantity you take per time, gradually, gradually, gradually. So by the time you stop taking, your system would have adjusted. But I would advise you to seek medical uh, care because I don't know what drug you're taking. There is a whole range of uh, psychoactive drugs and I don't know what you're taking. I don't know what your situation is. I think you need medical assistance. If you want to talk to me privately, slip into my DM, send a message, or go to Instagram at the Psychologist NG, uh, or Facebook at the Psychologist NG, or Twitter at the Psychologist NG, and leave me a message. I think we can further the discussion over there. Thank you very much. Thank you. But the next question I'm not doing well with my grades. I read all the time, but when it's time for exam or test, I forget everything I read. I read. Oh, that's another sad one there. Um, well, there's a whole range of issues that could be responsible for this, ranging from um, developmental disorders, learning uh, disabilities, uh, your study habits, and all of that. And um, what I'm going to do is to do a video on uh, good study habits. And um, I think when you watch that video, you should get some tips that will help you study better. So if you have no other problem, no other uh, genetic uh, or behavioral problem or developmental disorder responsible for you reading and not understanding, if it's a purely um, physical issue of reading, not reading right, not doing the right thing while studying, I think uh, just uh, subscribe to the Psychology Center TV and keep a tab on us somewhere in the future, soon enough. You're going to get a video that will help you with your study habits help you study better and perform better. Um, I think we're going to have to answer these questions in a series. Uh, a lot of time gone already, and I would like to stop here for today. Uh, however, we're going to do a second part of this. And if you want your questions to be among the questions we're answering, just leave your question in the comment section or go to my other uh, social media handles and ask your questions. And I'll do another video answering those questions. I hope I've been able to offer some useful information uh, we've been able to help uh, someone out there if you have further questions don't hesitate to ask like I said leave me questions leave me comments if you like this video please like it indeed and like I said please put a smile on my face and subscribe to the psychologist NG TV that will make me happy and motivate me to do more research and provide more information it's been a wonderful day Ross here I have enjoyed having hope with me Thank you so much, Hope. And until we see you again next week, it's bye. Bye. Love you. Bye.